you. Okay, so so today you are going to start uh, kind of more analytic aspects, heat equation. Heat kernel. Uh, asymptotic expansion. So, this is one method to prove uh, Boyle's law over manifolds. So this, of course, it was discovered much later than uh, Weil's original result, which was only for domains in, in Rn. This is for the Manian manifolds. And uh, Weil's original proof uh, does not extend to the Manian manifolds. Uh, his argument is based on, uh, yeah, approximating the domain by boxes. And uh, there is an easy formula, as we saw, for eigenvalues, eigenfunctions of Laplacian and boxes. And then he has to prove some inequalities, what happens when you approximate the domain from inside and from outside, what happens to the eigenvalues. And using minimax theory and some variational principles, he gave at least two different proofs, maybe a third proof also, but two different proofs. Uh, but the, those proofs are just, uh, they just work for, uh, uh, domains in Rn, in other words, for uh, flat, um, globally flat manifolds, basically. So what we want to do now is uh, go over to manifolds, so Riemannian manifolds, so Mg is a Riemannian manifold. Let's fix one of these. So the heat equation over this. Uh, for mg is the following equation. Uh, we have du dt equal to minus Laplacian of u and u of um, x um, zero is equal to u zero of x. So what is u? U is uh, the solution uh, of the heat equation we are looking for. So U is a function from M cross uh, R, say, maybe bigger than or equal to zero to, um, to C, it doesn't matter. Uh, smooth, say, just make life easier for us. Uh, so, by Laplacian of U, sometimes, of course, we are derived Laplacian X of U. This it means that we are neglecting here the uh, T variable. We are just looking at it as a function on M. For each T, it is a smooth function on M. And of course, we have the Laplacian on M, right? So, this is the Laplace operator as we've been working with. So that's the thing, and this is the initial condition. So the idea is that, of course, so we have this manifold now. Uh, it need not be compact, it can be uh, any manifold, Riemannian manifold. Um, so, uh, so you have some initial distribution of heat uh, over the manifold and uh, at time zero, there's an initial distribution, which is this one. And you let uh, the heat flow. This equation was obtained by actually Fourier. Uh, this is around 1820s, long time ago, not for the Iranian manifolds, for Rn, R2, R3, R. Uh, so this is the heat equation and it governs the, um, 
change in the temperature from the original temperature. So this U X T should be understood as temperature, of course. So that's temperature at X at time T. So at this point, uh, as you move in time, uh, the temperature at this point changes. The reason is that um, this sort of, so Fourier, the way Fourier thought about it is interesting. Fourier, uh, I mean, the prevalent theory of heat at the time was, I believe it was caloric theory. So they, everybody was thinking at that time that there was this substance, they, even gave it a name caloric that's responsible for uh, phenomena of heat and temperature. So more of that substance uh, is in some area, uh, there is more temperature and less it's colder. So the substance is basically moving from one place to another place from hot uh, to cold basically uh, kind of diffuses from hot to cold. And that's uh, the kind of uh, fictitious theory behind this heat equation. Um, so, but I mean, this equation, uh, so, okay, so this is temperature. So the temperature, you can think of temperature as density of heat material. Uh, so at some point, uh, there is this density. But I mean, you can even think of this, not necessarily in terms of temperature, you can think of say, imagine you have some ink, for example, some initial distribution of ink uh, substance, uh, somewhere is thicker, more ink, somewhere is less, and it flows from thicker, high density places to low density places. And uh, in many, many cases, actually, an equation like this, uh, is satisfied. We can also derive this equation if you want from uh, some uh, some conservation laws uh, of material. It's not very difficult to draw it. So this is what uh, I'm not going to do, but it's very, very standard. You can read this in many places. So anyhow, so this is uh, the heat equation. And uh, yeah, okay. So we'll, uh, we'll say a little more about it uh, later on. Okay, so um, of course, what we are interested in is uh, solutions of this problem, right? So for example, does it have a solution? I mean, if I give you a initial smooth function here, for example, even on the compact manifold, uh, is there any guarantee that there exists a solution and how unique this uh, solution is going to be? So. These are kind of initial issues that uh, we have to deal with, but eventually we'll see that uh, heat equation uh, tells a lot about the geometry of space. And through that, we will uh, gain information about the eigenvalues of the Laplacian and uh, eigenfunctions also. So that's, the, that's one way to gain information about the spectrum of the Laplacian by studying this heat equation. So it's not clear at first uh, that that's the case, but we have to uh, slowly move uh, in that direction. Okay, so there is uh, some formal solution here, of course. Uh, so let me write it, formal solution. Now the word formal means, uh, could mean non-rigorous, could mean just purely algebraic formulations, but mostly non-rigorous. At first, we don't care so much about convergence issues, but then eventually you have to grapple with those issues. I mean, there's no other way. Actually. So formal solution is, um, is this heat semigroup. So maybe I'll just write it as, I think I just wrote it as S of T equal to exponential of minus T plus N. So, um, 
Imagine you can construct this operator. Uh, Laplacian is an unbounded operator, as, as we know, in L2 metric, L2 norm is an unbounded operator. Uh, but imagine you can construct this operator nevertheless. Then you can see that uh, you've got a solution here. Uh, so u of uh, x and t equal to e to the minus tx u0 of x. Is the solution of the heat equation. So it looks like uh, it's very similar, like uh, in, in, in calculus, the way we solve this equation in calculus is exactly like this, except that the exponential of some number, we have to take exponential of some operator. Otherwise, it's pretty sim similar. Uh, the thing is, we have to make sense of this uh, calculation uh, somehow. And then we have to see that there are uh, other ways to construct this. Okay, so as far as uh, this operator goes, I mentioned uh, before that showing that this operator exists is not difficult per se, uh, using uh, spectral decomposition, right? So, um, so using spectral decomposition theorem. So what, what was it? We had to fix, uh, we have to fix a uh, complete orthonormal basis for eigenfunctions of, I mean, of L2 of M. So let uh, lambda I phi I I from zero to infinity. So, um, so a complete, so let me just write it like that actually, by I, I from zero to infinity is, is just, uh, yeah, is an is, is orthonormal basis. Normal basis of L2 of M. Well, these phi i's, uh, not only they are orthonormal, uh, in fact, they are eigenfunctions of the Laplacian. We know that such bases exist uh, by this spectral decomposition theorem, which I did not prove yet, but I'm assuming it right now. Uh, as I said, I may go back and prove it sometime. It's not very difficult. And so this spectrum of uh, Laplacian is just uh, this set lambda arms. Okay, so then you can write this, uh, you can write a proposal for this operator in this basis, which is not difficult. So you can just say e to the minus is by definition, let it be this, uh, infinite by infinite matrix, which is uh, gives you the matrix of this uh, operator in this orthonormal basis. So this is e to the minus t lambda zero, e to the minus t lambda one. This we just by definition uh, declare that to be our, our, uh, our operator, right? Um, but now, uh, so this operator exists. But what's not obvious is that even if you have a smooth function here, like uh, u0 of x, like initial uh, thing, if you apply this operator to that smooth function, you are going to get a smooth function. And as a result, you're going to get a solution. So let me write it down. This is one difficulty. So assuming, so let's uh, just assume for, for simplicity now, M is compact. And is, I mean, close, I mean, compact 
without boundary, right? Uh, and u0 belong to c b to n. So this solution uh, that we are uh, trying to say is a solution um, and this one. So all we know is that this object uh, belongs to L2 of M. Because look, I mean, this operator clearly is an L2 operator, right? Because the, I mean, these things on the diagonal are bounded. So this, this operator, I mean, it, it is a bounded operator, right? So it is L2 metric. So all we can say is that these, uh, this guy is in L2, but uh, that's not enough, right? We want to show that this is a solution. So it has to be at least twice differentiable with respect to X and one times differentiable with respect to T and da, da, da. And that's not clear, but why U belongs to C infinity. This is one difficulty. Um, so we can write an expression, at least as an L2, uh, a formula like this. We can certainly write u of x and t by writing u in the basis uh, phi, phi i's and then applying the matrix, we get this formula, right? Like in linear algebra, that's sigma. Uh, n from zero to infinity. I just used i, but now I'm using n. Sorry, e to the minus t lambda n phi n of x in a product of u zero and phi n. Uh, where u zero originally itself course has this expansion in this basis, which is orthonormal basis, which is inner product u zero and phi n phi n. Right. So I mean this series is a two convergent for any t positive even for t equal to zero. That's not a problem, but uh, again uh, why I mean what we have to know is that these coefficients go to zero uh, fast enough so that uh, you can prove um, uniform convergence uh, of this function and its derivatives uh, and so on. Now, this argument, you have seen maybe something similar to that. It works over R. Uh, you can use uh, Fourier theory, I mean, uh, to prove that. So here's a nice exercise to appreciate uh, the issues here, uh, show that uh, this is true by this I mean this question star for n we go to s1 and in general, for any flat tori using Fourier theory and any tori, I mean flat tori. The reason uh, is that uh, in Fourier theory, you learn that if you have a smooth function, its Fourier coefficients go to zero very, very fast. So you have control over the decay of these Fourier coefficients as a result, uh, you're guaranteed that the function that you write down here is a smooth. And if it is a smooth, then you can term by term uh, differentiate and uh, prove that this is the solution. But uh, in general, mm, this is not an obvious thing to do. That's one difficulty we have to grapple with. Okay, so uh, now, this is, uh, as I said, it's just a warm up for, for um, the things that 
to introduce. So let me now introduce uh, the so-called heat kernel. So heat kernel. This is also known as fundamental solution. Um, for heat equation. So what is it? Uh, so um, here's the definition. A function uh, I would say K from M. So, of course, I mean, given M and G. So, we are on a Riemannian manifold, and I'm not even assuming that M is compact for this definition. Uh, the definition makes sense for non compact ones as well. The function K from M cross M cross R bigger than zero to R. I hope this last part, yeah, it is that. Uh, to R is a heat kernel uh, for mg if uh, okay it satisfies the following conditions uh, three conditions one so now, uh, so this, I, I, I'm going to, yeah, so I'm going to, to use a notation, which uh, if our students commit that notation, we will award them, but nevertheless is a useful uh, notation. So I just say K of X, Y, T for the function, right? So this is just notation for function. Okay, if K of X, Y, T is smooth, is I, I would say is C zero in uh, X, Y, T. This is jointly. So what we're saying is, is, is a continuous function uh, jointly in these three variables on this domain, uh, C two. in y and c1 in t so we are not assuming uh, more than c0 at the moment in x uh, so it's just c2 in y c1 in t that's one condition second is that it's actually a solution of the heat equation with respect to this y and t variable for any x so for any x, um, yeah, so uh, delta y plus ddt of uh, k is equal to zero on m. Okay, so for any x, um, it solves the heat equation for us. This is the heat equation, right? With respect to this y variable and t variable. So it's like an infinite family of solutions uh, of this uh, heat equation uh, for each x we are constructing. And thirdly, is that again for any x, and uh, this function k, so fix x, k x as a function of this variable, and t converges to delta x as t goes to zero plus. Okay, so this third one now I have to um, tell you what it is.
So, so first of all, delta x is a Dirac distribution. I mean, Dirac delta function at x belonging to n. So it is a distribution. The value of this distribution on any test function is evaluation at x, right? So delta x of phi equal to phi of x. So for any uh, yeah phi belonging to c with c of n. So any function with compact support on n, like this is a space of test functions. Uh, on, on n, then this is the definition of the delta function as a distribution. Now, the left hand side, of course, is a function. So, in particular, it's a distribution too. So, we are saying that this family of distributions convergence to this Dirac mass or Dirac delta function at x. So, what does it mean? So, it means that. So three really means the following. Rigorously means the following. For any phi belonging to C infinite C of M, uh, integral over M, uh, K, X, Y, T, phi of Y, the volume g of y, right? This converges to as t goes to zero from above. There's no question from the other side, of course, to uh, phi of x. Okay, so this is a kind of concise way thinking distribution distributionally. We can write it very concisely like that, but that's the meaning of this equation. So we are converging like that, right? So that's the, mm, okay, so that's, yeah, that's the definition of the heat kernel or fundamental solution or a fundamental solution for, uh, for the heat equation on this Riemannian can I ask something? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so, so uh, this looks like uh, uh, you are like creating infinite temperature at all possible points on the man on the manifold one at a time and seeing how it should evolve and putting all the solutions together. Absolutely correct. Yes, that's absolutely correct. Yeah, indeed, that's that's the idea. So what you what you what you are seeing is that. So what is the meaning of k of x, y, t? k of x, y, t. So the meaning is this. We are, okay, so we have this manifold. So for each point x, uh, imagine you are doing the following experiment. Exactly, you're doing the following experiment. You put um, a unit, uh, so to speak, um, volume of heat or unit uh, kind of mass of heat at this point. So of course, because it's uh, the point has zero size, has volume zero, so the temperature at that point is going to be infinite. So at that point, at point t equal to zero, the temperature is, is huge, is infinite, and everywhere else is zero. And that's our initial condition delta x. That's the initial condition delta x. And you let heat diffuse in time. So this amount of heat, unit heat that we have, unit amount of heat that we have put there, and as a result, we got infinite temperature, very sharp uh, increase at at, at point x, uh, it diffuses in time. And then we are asking, okay, for a given point y on the manifold and at time t, what is the temperature at that point? 
Yeah, exactly. And that's the temperature that we intersect. So uh, as we'll see, uh, heat this has this strange property that it has infinite propagation speed in the sense that you will see that any moment, any positive moment of time, all over the manifold, the heat is going to be felt. Small amount, but there's going to, to have some positive temperature at every point on the manifold, which is, of course, not realistic because it's uh, infinite propagation speed is not uh, physical, but that's what uh, they have. That's the, that's, the, that's, that's the theory, and it's still very useful theory. So that's, that's the intuition behind this, uh, this uh, heat kernel, uh, one intuition, fundamental solution of this heat kernel. Yeah. OK, any other questions or comments? OK, so um, now the question is, of course, why this should exist at all? And what's it good for and what we can do? Uh, so that's the that's uh, that's these are the things that we have to unravel now. So question why such a fundamental solution for heat kernel exists? Is it unique? In what sense it is unique? And uh, why is this useful? How to use it? question. So we have these three questions uh, in front of us um, that uh, we have to find answers to. Uh, but I mean, constructing fundamental solutions uh, or green functions or, um, or this sort of kernels, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, one of the major occupations, preoccupations in, in PVE. So in that regard, this is stuff is very much standard. I mean, in PVE theory, this is completely standard and uh, useful thing to do. So what we are trying to understand uh, its applications to geometry now. Okay, so that's our definition. Now let's look at example. So you can imagine there are many examples where this can be constructed explicitly, right? And somehow the most important example is the following. So um, our N is uh, flat space symmetric. Of course, in this case, Laplacian is um, minus uh, some i squared, right? Partial derivatives squared. And uh, so the question is, what is the uh, heat kernel in this case? So heat kernel in this case is, is a very, very fundamental um, essential uh, object of mathematics and physics. It's uh, the following uh, function k of x, y, e is equal to four pi t, the power minus n over two, exponential of minus absolute value of x minus y squared over four t. Okay, so I highly recommend you to know this expression by heart. I mean, that's a, that's a Gaussian. So it's, uh, of course, you need two variables because the function k is a function of two plus one variables. So these are two variables x and y, space, two space variables, one time variable is like that. So this is a family of Gaussians. 
And um, now, uh, the claim is that this is um, K is a D kernel. It's most important kernel. It cannot uh, of Rn with flat metric, of course. Okay, so uh, what we have to check, of course, condition one is trivial because this guy is, you see, this um, x and y belong to Rn. And t is positive, right? So that's the domain. Of course, in the function in its natural domain is is a smooth in all three variables. It's uh, it's uh, even an analytic function in all three variables. So this function is as nice as it gets in terms of the smoothness goes. So one is trivial. Two. Now two is an interesting calculation. I want you to do it. Check that. Uh, Cal calculate that um, delta y plus dt uh, of uh, k is equal to zero for all x. Uh, yeah, I mean you can differentiate uh, exponentials and. Differentiate with respect to t, so that's not difficult. We can, we can do that. So that's a thing. Now the question is, what is uh, why three is true? The distribution property. So y k of x y t converges to delta x uh, as t goes to zero for any x belonging to Rn. But what, why uh, such a thing is true? Uh, such a thing is true because of some uh, general ideas. Uh, it's not, uh, again, some calculation. Of course, you will do it by calculations also, but I mean, it's, uh, it's better to know by some general ideas this is the case. So uh, fix, let's fix x belonging to Rn. And let's look at this function near x as a function of y, right? So so when will you, so this is, uh, yeah. so when, when you look around x, right? When, when you look at this function, this function has some nice properties. First of all, its integral over y space uh, is one. So integral k x y um, t d y over r n is equal to one. Remember, x is fixed, uh, so x, you know, just looking at this pole uh, for all x and for all t positive. Okay, right, so now this is uh, integ integral of a Gaussian, so you have to know how to integrate Gaussians, right? So, um, well, as you know, integrals of Gaussians are the most important integrals in mathematics and physics. So they are everywhere. So that's a, so integral of a Gaussian. General gives you. Well, there's a parameter, but the parameter here is, in fact, is given there exactly in such a way that that makes. Uh, this is a normalization constant if I cancels give you one. So the second thing you notice is that the support, I shouldn't say support, but uh, these functions rapidly go to zero away from X. So away from X, 
uh, is k x y t um, so is very small for uh, for t uh, small enough. So in other words, uh, what happens is that uh, we have this family of functions. Like these are Gaussians, right? Okay, so as t uh, shrinks to zero, you are going to get uh, functions whose values away from x are smaller and smaller. The total mass, the total, you can imagine it's the total heat that's available to us because of this original diffusion is one and uh, it's sharply picked like that. So these uh, properties uh, tells you that this is actually an approximate family to uh, delta function. So that's one way to approximate delta functions. This is, so basically, any family of functions that has these properties uh, is, is an approximation to delta function to x. I mean, the, yeah, at that point, there is nothing special about Gaussian. Okay, at that point, is this is very, very special for Gaussian. If you didn't have Gaussian, you would be in trouble, of course. And the total mass being equal to one is property of Gaussian. But uh, approximation properties is a very universal uh, thing. It's, it's a general theme of approximations, uh, which are, um, uh, which are, uh, but you know, from analysis, you can have lots of lots of different approximating uh, families to 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 the So as I said, so I, so I highly recommend you do this example one from here. You get that um, indeed uh, K is a heat curve. So that's um, one example. Now, I want you to do an exercise related to this. Uh, the exercise is that show that uh, the, this heat kernel is not unique. Uh, construct another heat kernel different from this. So you, you have to construct another function k x y t that satisfies those axioms, uh, but different from them. So. This is because of property of, because we are on a non-compact space. Um, so exercise is construct another um, heat kernel. Or RN. Okay. And in fact, you can construct many, many others. Uh, now, in what sense this is unique? Um, yeah, you, you will discover when you construct those functions, you will discover it's, it's a nice exercise. You discover what extra condition you have to impose on this function to guarantee uniqueness. Uh, so you will see that. Okay, now. Uh, this is a good example, but then uh, let me give you another example. So this would be example two. Any questions, by the way? Okay, so let's do example two. So example two is, of course, our favorite example, um, circle. I mean, compact example is circle or flat torah. I mean, so let's do it for circle. So 
So circle, I, I, I take a circle of radius one. Circle of radius one. Uh, now, um, okay, so, so what is, so the task is construct the heat term for this one. So this is interesting because we are going to construct two different uh, heat kernels and they look so different. And then the question uh, is, uh, we want to show that they are the same and we'll see that what kind of issues it brings in. So, uh, so here is method one. Um, okay, so we use the fact that R, to see currently constructed here, is a covering space of S1. And anytime you have this covering space, if you construct the heat kernel for, 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 the, for the quotient, and then you can go and construct the heat kernel for the covering space by periodizing. I mean, vice versa, sorry, from covering space, especially if it is universal covering space to the, to the quotient, and you can construct by periodizing. So let me tell you what. So, uh, so we have this, so this is the universal, uh, Covering map. And we have uh, a heat kernel for um, R here. So we can construct for a swan a heat kernel like this. So that K, so this is K. S1 now, for now, of x, y, t. So we can think of x and y as elements of R mod 2 pi. Um, okay, so let this be equal to sum. So the, the group here, I mean pi 1 of S1 is equal to z. So the average this function over the action of the Z group on, on functions on R, right? So we, we periodize over that. So let this be equal to N belonging to Z, four pi T, to the power minus N over two. And then uh, I need, To, uh, because there's no space variable here, space variable here, so I periodize here, so I get exponential of minus absolute value of x minus y minus two pi n squared, yeah, over 40. Okay. The, the exponent of four pi t that's not the same n, right? It's just Sorry. one. N is one there. I mean. Sorry. The, the the exponent of four pi t that's that n is one here, right? It's not the summation variable. Right? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, it's one. N is one. Yes, yes, yes. Very good. <laughs> n is one, right? So minus half. Oh gosh, I hope. No, this is R n. That's fine. Here is one, right? So, so now your exercise, now of course, this makes sense to say that this is the heat kernel. So your exercise, exercise two now is to show that this is actually the heat kernel for a swan. So let me write it. Um, exercise.
Um, okay, but now I'm going to construct another uh, using another idea, the heat kernel uh, for this, and then um, we're going to argue that they are going to be the same. So alternative method. So this is method one. So this is method two now. Um, so the method, so you see, this method we constructed almost blindly, right? We just used the covering map property and periodized and using the fact that we knew the heat kernel over the covering space. And then we constructed the heat kernel on, 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 on the quotient. So that's, um, that's kind of topological argument. But now we are going to use uh, another method. So the second method is that we know actually the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions of this uh, operator, right? So use eigenvalues and eigenfunctions of delta equal to minus t2 dx2 on S1. Well, we know what they are, right? So first of all, this uh, y n is equal to uh, e to the i n x, right? Uh, yes. And belonging to z. And the uh, eigenvalues are n squared. So uh, if you label eigenvalues from zero to infinity, you're going to say that they have multiplicity uh, two, uh, but you can label it from minus infinity to infinity and then n squared uh, for each of those positive or minus one appears one. So again, you have multiplicity two, but the labeling is different. So if you use this labeling, then I can just say, I can write down a general formal expression for heat kernel in general. Uh, so, I mean, the, the general formula is something like this sum. So, so let me write it. K of X, Y, T equal to sum exponential of minus t lambda n phi n of x phi n of y um, over n right now uh, so in general of course because we allow you have a choice, right? You can work uh, to, to write the basis. You can work with complex uh, exponentials or with real exp uh, with, with, with sine and cosine functions. You have a choice. So if you work with uh, complex exponentials, you have to allow uh, complex conjugation because the inner product in uh, with using complex numbers, uh, of course, complex functions contains this. So this is the correct formula. In general, this is. Okay, so now using this, of course, I get uh, a second formula, which is this. So we get here k s1 t love of x y t equal to sum exponential of minus t. Now these guys are n squared, right? e to the i n x exponential of minus i n y and below me to say. Now, 
you wouldn't have any difficulty to show that this series is absolutely convergent. All its derivatives are uniformly convergent and the function is a smooth and is a heat kernel. You don't have, you wouldn't have any difficulty to do this. So easy to see that, I mean, for this one, because you have these coefficients and everything is just so explicit, uh, easy to see that, I mean, the same here. Um, you see that uh, K, tilde S1 is C infinity in X, Y, T and is a D kernel for S1 uh, of radius one and flat metric. So uh, now, um, by some general results, I will prove. Um, so the thing is, um, in fact, these two things are the same. These two functions are the same. K is one. X y t is equal to k tilde s one x y t. Now, if, if you look at it, it, it's a very, very strange identity, right? Uh, it's, uh, it's quite surprising because, I mean, the two sides, uh, they look so different. They look so different. There is this uh, one over root t factor here, and then t is in the denominator. And here there's no one over root t factor. t is not in the denominator, t is in front. And uh, yeah, I mean, they look really, really different. Okay, so. Question, Masudi. What's that? I have a question, please, if. Yes, yes, sure. So I didn't get the logic behind that summation, Z copies of Gaussian. You Did said because first fundamental group of S1 is Z, we have that, did you say that? Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a covering map, right? And uh, Laplacian locally on the, on, the, on the quotient and on the covering are the same because these two spaces are locally isometric to each other as we discussed before, right? So if you solve a heat equation on the base locally, you have solved heat equation on top so that's fine. Uh, the only thing is you need a function that's periodic, um, which means that then as a result, it exists on the quotient. So you have to per per periodize. We did periodize by averaging over Z. That's a trick, it's called averaging. And uh, the rest of the argument is pretty, okay. pretty uh, natural because any point you take, you just look at inverse image upstairs one point and yeah so the, the the rest of the argument is pretty pretty standard but it's it's very very important to think about it yeah i mean don't take uh, these words as uh, as something easy because sometimes i may make it sound easy but you have to think deeply about it that's very very important uh, i mean uh if if i don't have any example but what about if you have a covering map and the fundamental group of the space is a space which deformation retracts to figure eight? You can construct then, by averaging over the over this discrete group, which over pi one. You can construct. Always you can construct. Yeah. But I I mean figure eight is not a manifold, so. No, I, that, because of that, I'm saying deformation retract to it. I'm not saying figure eight itself, because you have a point that. What is your manifold then? Uh, something like two, something with two holes in it. Okay. Well, this argument doesn't work for the homo, just homotopy like that, right? Because 
the, I mean, you're already going from one dimension to two dimensions, so things totally change, right? Oh, okay. Things have to be isometric, so. Okay, yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, but no, but I mean, uh, these questions are, are, are interesting because we have to really uh, think deeply about it. I mean, uh, and again, uh, so now that you ask, so let me mention, um, there is a paper by Serge Lang. I highly, highly recommend it. Uh, so let me write it here. So I think it's Lang and Jorgensen. I think he was a student of Lang. Uh, it's called the ubiquitous heat kernel. So, you know, Serge Lang, of course, was a great mathematician, was a great number theorist, analytic number theorist, algebraic number theorist, a lot of things. Uh, so, towards the end of his life, I think he came to the conclusion that heat kernel, if very abstractly general, deeply understood, uh, holds secrets of a lot of unsolved problems in mathematics. So. He, he deeply believed in heat kernel and the power of heat kernel. So I highly recommend this article to, to you because it's very visionary. And uh, when, you, when you open it, you see that, well, Lang really had a big vision of mathematics and heat kernel is kind of at the center of this. So that's, uh, I highly recommend this article, the ubiquitous heat kernel. He also wrote several books and many, many papers applying heat kernel to number theory questions, only thing number theory questions. So yeah, that's, uh, that's one. Okay, now uh, back to this question before we take the break. So this uh, is true and this is a result of what? Do you remember? Poisson summation formula. It's a Poisson summation formula, right. So this actually follows from Poisson summation formula. So, we can say it's even equivalent to Poisson summation. So if you prove uniqueness of heat kernel, so that gives you a proof of Poisson summation formula. So here is a third proof of Poisson summation formula. Uniqueness of heat kernel on compact manifolds, as we will prove, gives you yet another proof of Poisson summation. So this is star is equivalent to PSF. Of course, you can do it for flat tori. Same for flat tori. I mean, and what gamma, I believe I, I, I used the word gamma for tori. So that's, um, that's, um, That's the thing. Okay, so um, I think it's a good time to take a break. Okay, so we take a break and then uh, we come back. Okay, so um, the last thing we are going to do today is uh, just indicate what's uh, ahead, two methods construct. So mm, this is for MG compact, close line. Close the line, so for uh, so the first method is what actually I indicated here, but in general, 
So let uh, y n of y k maybe k from zero infinity orthonormal basis of eigenfunctions for this uh, space. I mean, I'm going to start to eigenfunctions. So y k equal to lambda k y k. Um, then there is a theorem. This theorem is due to I believe. So I believe this is in 1980, around that time. And I'm surprised uh, this came quite late. Maybe it was known, but maybe the proof that uh, you can find in uh, Berger's book uh, is, is his proof. Uh, so, so the function, okay. The series. So K of X, Y, T equal to sum exponential of minus T and Y of X, Y of bar of Y. Ah, uh, K, sorry. from zero up to infinity is convergent to a smooth function k to a smooth function k which is in fact a heat kernel for Um, yeah, for um, for um, yeah, for 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 yeah, for for the Laplace. So the value of this theorem is, is purely existential. I mean, it just says that heat kernel exists. And if you believe in a spectral decomposition theorem, you can construct it by this formula. Uh, of course, the difficulty of this result, I mean, the result like this is that we don't have access to phi, phi n's and lambda, phi k's and lambda k's, right? We don't know. Uh, what phi k's are, what lambda k's are. Uh, nevertheless, uh, this is a very valuable theorem. I mean, it, it's an incredible theorem because uh, it just in uh, just shows the series. It is showing the series is convergent is is not obvious at all. I mean, as as we discussed before, I mean, the, we know that all we know so far about these lambda k's is that they just go to infinity and they have finite multiplicity each of them. If you look at uh, distinct ones. Uh, otherwise, uh, we don't know how fast they are growing, but certainly there is something here that makes it convergent. Not only that, uh, it's convergent in, in, in a very nice way. I mean, these functions are actually smooth. I, I mean, this is also part of the general theory of elliptic PDEs, but some being smooth is something different. So that's, uh, that's already quite interesting result. But um, and it has some value, though, uh, beyond proving existence of heat kernel. I, I, I will link it later. So that's um, so for proof of this, you can read. Uh, I mean, the best place is really this book by Berger. This French book uh, I mentioned by, by 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 an expert and his colleagues. So Berger, Marcel Berger, is a great uh, geometer. So stop there. It's the same Berger that did classification of these uh, 
these uh, holonomy groups uh, for for Riemannian manifolds, uh, Riemannian holonomies. There's a famous theorem of Okay, um, can I clarify something real quick? Yeah. Uh, what do you mean when you say something is a heat kernel for the Laplacian? Um, in the sense that I, men I mentioned, right? I mean, uh, the way, I mean, my definition. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't mean much there. I mean, I can just, I can just even take it out if you are making more happy. Right. Okay. Okay. So, so it just satisfies the definition said before. Okay. Yes. yes exactly. Right. The original definition. I mean, that's. So yeah. Just maybe neglect this. This is a heat kernel. I mean, maybe I should. Yeah. Indeed. I should have better said maybe heat kernel for mg. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe I just write for mg. So, yeah. Okay. So that's one thing. But now, uh, so. Alternative method is uh, asymptotic expansions. Well, that's not alternatively. I mean, um, okay, yeah, it is. It is alternative. Yeah. So alternatively, we can construct. A heat kernel and its asymptotic expansion asymptotic expansion as okay, so now this comes in the following form. So K of so you can forget about this result now, but K of X, Y, T as um, okay, so so we have this factor which is four pi t the power minus n over two exponential of minus distance of x and y squared over 4t. And then there is some infinite series, which is u0 of x and y plus u1 of x and y t plus u2 of x and y t2 so on. Now, um, so I have to define all these terms here and this symbol. So such that, um, in fact, so first of all, these UIs from M cross M to R are smooth functions that's one thing uh, u0 of xx is just identity in x i mean just i mean just one there's no identity it's one for all x belonging to m uh, yeah so uh, I believe the next term uh, is actually no. One over six uh, scalar curvature. S is scalar curvature. I will define this concept uh, in case you have forgotten. You have seen it, I'm sure, but I'm Scalar curvature of mg of x, and in general, all the higher uh, things ui uh, 
can be computed in principle um, by some local, by some invariant local formulas, I mean by some local formulas. So we will learn more about the nature of these formulas, but the thing is, um, there are algorithms, very, very complicated, that gives you formulas for values of ui on the diagonal. What really matters is values of ui on the diagonal that are got given. Away from the diagonal, uh, these values are not, um, they are not even well defined because, because this notation has to be understood. This is an asymptotic expansion. Asymptotic expansion. So what do we mean? Um, by asymptotic expansion, uh, we mean the following. I mean, okay, first of all, this series in the right hand side need not be convergent for any x, y, or t at all. The series could be divergent at all points, okay? I mean, it, it's, it's typical, actually, typically happens that the series is divergent. Nevertheless, we say this is asymptotic expansion. So, what do we mean by this asymptotic expansion? We mean that if you take, now this is of course a, an honest to God function, right? K, X, Y, T, it's a heat kernel. If you take this function and you take this series, if, if you cut it at Tn, the, the difference is of order of T to the N plus one. So let me write it for any N bigger than equal to zero absolute value of k t x y minus okay so let me call this function g t x y i mean g x y t minus g x y t oh sorry this is a bad change of notation at this stage i'm sorry x y minus G X Y T times U zero plus U uh, one T plus U N T N. The difference between this and the cutoff is um, actually less than or equal to C T to the power N plus one. So it means that the difference is cap O, cap O uh, of uh, T to the N plus one. Now this is for all X, Y in N and uh, for T uh, small enough. Um, okay. So in this sense, this series is, um, is an approximation to the heat kernel. So we have to construct this approximation. And you know, so what is this D? D is the, the, the geodesic distance, right? D of x, y on the manifold is geodesic distance. I mean, okay, so you have the metric and for each point, you can compute uh, the infimum of the distance between the two and then uh, 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 you can, uh, yeah, you can just, uh, you can just, uh, of course, as you know, you can compute the distance. Yeah, well, I mean, there is a metric. There is a metric in the sense of uh, distance function uh, that's defined using Riemannian metric, which is infinitesimally defined, but then you just minimize the 
all lengths of all curves that connect the two points are there. So now, uh, shouldn't in this rem shouldn't in this remainder term uh, be uh, t to power n plus one minus n over two? Because the next term of the expansion that is neglected has t to n plus one, uh, but also there is t to minus n over two from this prefactor. Uh, just a second. Uh, yes, yes, there should be. Yes, I think I I made a mistake here. Yes, there should be times uh, t to the power n minus two here. Yes. Yeah, because I just neglected that. Yeah. Right, right, right. We will get to that. Right, right, right. That's uh, absolutely correct. Uh, but then I was going to say something here, which I forgot. Yeah, so you see here, the idea of, uh, of this expansion is that for flat space, we had this, right, for Rn. This was uh, the heat kernel for flat space, for Rn, actually, right? That's what we got. And when you go to curve manifolds, uh, you have to write down some corrections. So there are an infinite number of terms that come up in the corrections. And at the end, they will give you um, this uh, expression for the heat kernel, not for the heat kernel, but for an asymptotic expansion of the heat kernel. So there are two uh, more results uh, that or drive from this. So there are basically three asymptotic expansions. I want you to think about it for the next lecture when we come back. So the next one is when you put x equal to y. So this is the second asymptotic expansion. So the second asymptotic expansion is um, when we take x equal to y on the diagram. We stick everything to the diagram. Then you get that k x x t. Then this factor completely disappears. You get four pi t. I mean, I should not say equal. <laughs> That's just four pi t minus n over two times u zero of x x x, which is one uh, anyhow. So let me write it: u zero x x plus u one x x t. So. This is now, uh, this has, uh, as we discussed, I mean, this has a much more invariant meaning because these functions are non negotiable. I mean, these functions u0, u1, u2 are unique. Uh, in this expression, these uis are not unique. I mean, uh, as we will construct, actually, you see that the moment you just move away infinitesimally from the diagonal, you have a lot of choices to correct uh, the terms. Uh, at x one, but only at x equal to y that uniqueness appears. So these guys are all unique, and they can be their tensorial quantities essentially. They are constructed. So let me write it here: u i x x are constructed from curvature tensor. R I J K L and its covariant derivatives. So I mean, up to term A six already calculated by Gilkey, and in some papers we calculate up to A twelve. I mean, with my students and uh, also there are a lot of other people, they are using these things also in physics. Uh, but in general, of course, it's highly, highly complicated. Nobody knows uh, the general formula, although there is an algorithm that kind of computes it, but it takes extremely, extremely amount of work and time to unravel the formulas. But um, yeah, I mean, if the, 
if the you know future of mankind depends on calculating like the 14th term you can go on and calculate it so to speak but uh, nobody goes and calculates that anyhow so that's not and the third asymptotic expansion is where you actually integrate this guy over the manifold, right? So you integrate this. So this is where you see that mt, which is trace of exponential of minus t Laplacian, as we defined. Uh, but this is the kernel. I will argue that this is going to be equal to integral k of uh, x xt, the volume of x, well, the volume x over n. And uh, if you have two asymptotic expansions, if you integrate, you keep t fixed if you integrate against x, uh, then you have asymptotic expansion for t functions. So this is asymptotically then is given by okay. So this is asymptotically given by four pi t to the power minus n over two. Then we get these numbers now: a zero plus a one t a two t two under a i. Of course, it's nothing but integral u i x x the volume of x um, over n. Now a zero is equal to, uh, of course, a zero uh, integral u zero u zero. I said that then our calculations will show that u zero is constant function of one. So if you integrate against uh, volume uh, measure, you get volume. Okay, so we get volume of it. So the leading term, so this is the famous wire term. Okay, so we have these three expansions to work out. Uh, at the end, the first result we get is that a zero is equal to volume of m is the volume term. So then the question is, is there a relation between this volume that we obtained here and Boyle's asymptotic law? The answer is yes. Uh, deriving this will imply Boyle's law. Uh, but to prove this, uh, you still need some results of analysis because that's like asymptotic for some of, asymptotics of the partition function near t equal to zero and growth of eigenvalues. These are two uh, not easily, you know, uh, kind of estimates that are related. But there, there are these uh, theorems of analysis called Tauberian theorems. <coughs> we'll prove one of them. And once you prove this Tauberian theorem, you can get from here to Boyle's law. So this is uh, by Tauberian theorems. So for Wednesday, I want you to look at this book here by Berger, please. And also think about the difference between asymptotic expansion and this uh, power series expansions or, or the usual, uh, usual expansion that we had in uh, you, you, you studied in analysis, usually in mathematics. They are two very, very different types of objects. Actually, they are somehow, in some sense, they are dual to each other. They are, they are dual to each other. Uh, so asymptotic expansion, it may look nonsense because it's divergent, but it's absolutely fundamental and crucial uh, for applications. It's not nonsense. It's just you have to interpret it in the right way. That's it. So. So sorry, I meant went over time. So I will just stop the video and then uh, we shall.